Hello, everyone. Here is Yi Chen from the Institute for Infocom Research in Singapore. I'm going to talk about our work on a milk based traffic signal scheduling solution with consideration of the platoon dispersion. So in this work, we introduce a mathematical model for traffic signal scheduling problem with consideration of a platoon dispersion model. The traffic signal scheduling problem is formulated as a discrete time optimization problem, while the objectives are to reduce the average delay time for each link and the stop delay time in the queue for each intersection. This work is jointly done with Prof. Zhong Su from the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering at Nanyang Technological University. Uh, as we know, the traffic congestion is a key challenge in most of the cities around the world, and uh, it leads to billions of dollars loss every year. Besides upgrading the costly infrastructure, a renovated traffic signal scheduling scheme is vital and more affordable to smooth the traffic movement in urban areas in order to alleviate the traffic congestions. And here is, is a skeleton of our work and the linkages to other counterparts uh, in the traffic engineering. And we treat the system model as a core of our methodological de development. And besides uh, this modeling, we are still requiring some kind of um, predictions to provide the parameters used in our model, to fine tune model and to get a, an, an accurate awareness of the, of the traffic uh, scenarios. Uh, so from our perspectives, there are many open issues that need to be solved in the traffic light control scheme design. Uh, firstly, the prediction issue. Uh, so for the model-based strategy, the, top, the topology of the network, such as uh, turning ratios, saturation flows, and, and et cetera, is predefined and fixed. So the accuracy of the traffic model and the, the network information uh, limits the network performance. And furthermore, the accuracy of the traffic flow profile prediction might not be uh, able to support the, the requirements from the traffic light control strategy. And secondly, from the controller point of view, the traffic signal controller lacks awareness of the traffic movement and the traffic flow profile inserted in the system are not well estimated which might also limit the performance improvement. And thirdly, the integration of the control and the prediction are not sufficiently involved in the current framework. And there are roughly two paths to go when designing a, traf a traffic light control scheme, the non-cycle-based one and the cycle-based one. So in our previous work, we introduced a non-cycle-based one uh, scheme, which to optimize the selection of the um, phases uh, to be deployed at each signalized intersection in a network, as well as to optimize the uh, length of each select phase. And uh, we introduced some efficient approach to solve this problem. The cycle-based one loses the feasibility uh, to select the phase, or in other words, the phase sequence is fixed, uh, which might limit the control performance However, in real-world application, this limitation might also be its advantage. So the driver mm, will have a better expectation of the, upcom uh, of the upcoming phases, and the driving behaviors could be well regulated and predicted. And uh, in this work, we intend to design our traffic lights control uh, scheme based on a cycle-based stru structure. And our target are to capture the characters in the in ingress flow profile for, from a macroscopic point of view, and then to capture the short period traffic flow change by predicting the incoming flow pattern periodically. And in this pre presentation, I will uh, cover the system modeling, the conversion of some nonlinear uh, constraints, and then uh, the simulation work I introduced to numerically validate our proposed method. And we first uh, uh, introduced the, mass, uh, the macroscopic model used in our traffic signal scheduling problem formulation. So the model is developed based on a directed graph and a typical macroscopic model, which includes intersection. Uh, links and uh, traffic flows as shown in this figure. So for a direct graph which knows the traffic network is introduced as a basement of the, ma uh, the macroscopic traffic model. And here are some uh, nomenclatures. So the L is the set of all the link, the one-way links, and the J is the set of all the intersections. And the omega is introduced uh, to, uh, to denote the set of faces at each intersection, and the faces are associated with a group of compatible traffic movements from approaches directed to the intersection. And our traffic uh, signal scheduling problem is to determine the 
optimal phase length in a in a cycle uh, to cater the traffic uh, to cater the traffic flow pattern. The decision variables in this problem formulation is the traffic uh, signal status shift in time, which is denoted as Tg, uh, as shown in, uh, in equation two. And in this problem formulation proposed in the paper to simplify the deviation, we assume that there is only one status shifting point for each traffic signal group in a cycle. So now we try to introduce all the constraints in our a model based on these nomenclatures. Uh, first uh, is the, uh, uh, the phase status and green time constraint. As the problem is developed based on a discrete time model, uh, the status of the traffic signal group at each sampling time is required uh, to be determined based on the phase settings. So the relationship between the green time and the uh, phase uh, status for each intersection could be described in 3A and 3B. And that is the phase index will be shifted after the phase uh, shifting point is reached. So uh, to remove the large con constraint, the, the, the relation, uh, the quadratic items could be introduced to the formulation uh, to convert the logic part to nonlinear parts. Uh, for example, a quadratic constraint could be achieved by shifting the delta uh, with 0 0.5 and we denote the converting uh, 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 things, uh, stuffs in the equation 5a and 5b. And note that the quadratic constraint could be implemented in some conventional optimizers to generate the quadratic constraints program, programming problem, uh, which is also applicable when solving the problem. And in later stage, we try to uh, 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 convert this quadratic constraint into some mixed integer linear constraints. And then the constraint on the network-wise average delay and stop delays are introduced. So the average traffic delay and the stop delay time could be estimated as follows uh, based on the uh, spatial temporal chart. And uh, the equations are shown in 6, uh, 6A and 6B. So uh, for, the queue pro for the queuing process, we introduce the queue entering, the queue exiting, and the queue length dynamics. First, to introduce the queue entering process, we take the platoon dispersion model proposed by uh, Robertson into its consideration. In this model, the queue length proposed could be described by the information from the incoming flow and the information from the current queue as a, uh, the stop line. Uh, this is a continuous flow, and we need to convert it into the discrete time format to cater uh, the requirements of our modeling. So to convert this model uh, to a discrete time model, we make the following modification based on Robertson's model, uh, which are shown as follows in the equation H. So the Q initial is the initial value of the pro uh, process of the ingress flow from the outside area, uh, and the UI denotes the, uh, uh, the upstream uh, set of the link I. And uh, this uh, logic constraint is a piecewise defined function with uh, both linear and nonlinear segments. And this function could be degraded into a piecewise linear function by assuming uh, f uh, to be constant. Uh, so for the queue exiting flow, there are three different cases. So first, if the traffic signal is screwing and the queue is non-empty, then the queue will be released with a constant free uh, queue releasing flow. Uh, as shown in equation nine. Um, and secondly, if the queue signal is screen and the queue is empty, the queue enters a balanced status and the queue releasing speed uh, equals to the queue build up uh, speed. And uh, thirdly, uh, if the traffic signal is red, the queue is formed up and at the intersection and non-vehicle uh, could exit from the queue. So the queue exit flow will be zero. And uh, we can combine these three scenarios into two uh, logic constraints, which are shown uh, below in this LX3. Uh, so if the queue is not empty, the queue release rate is based on the, some determined value. Otherwise, if the queue uh, is empty, the dynamics are determined based on the incoming flow uh, from the streams. And the phase status delta uh, is introduced to determine the on-off status of the exit traffic flow. Uh, to simplify this model, uh, the, inter, mm, uh, uh, the intermediate status are ignored when we for, uh, when we formulating the uh, Q dynamics, uh, which is always applicable to the macroscopic model. So the Q length dynamic is described with a max function shown below in the equation 13. 
and uh, in this equation, we introduce the max uh, function to limit the Q length, and uh, it's, it needs to be transferred into a sequence of the mixed integer linear constraints uh, to be solved uh, with an optimizer. So for the optimization uh, objective function, as we introduced uh, in the problem formulation, the VI is the average delay of the i's link for the whole cycle time, and the CI is the stop delay uh, on, in, on, on, on the i's link for the whole cycle length, for the whole cycle length. So we define the objective function by combining these two performance indices together with some weighting factors. And in the next few slides, I will briefly talk about uh, how this nonlinear constraints or the logic constraints are converted uh, uh, into the mixed linear constraints. So uh, we use the con uh, conversion uh, uh, of Q2 as an example, and a similar process could be carried out uh, to Q1 and uh, some others. Uh, so for Q2, we introduce a variable, a new variable to describe the quadratic term. Uh, uh, as shown in 16. Then by determining the upper and lower bound uh, of, the, uh, of this variable, uh, the new variable could be replaced by the sequence of uh, mixed integer linear constraints as shown in, six, uh, in 17. Uh, so for other quadratic constraints, similar pr process could be carried to, ca uh, to change them to the mixed integer linear constraints. And uh, for uh, large constraints, the first step is to introduce some binary variables to denote uh, the on-off status. Uh, and then the binary variables could be rewritten into some quadratic forms. And uh, for, the qu for the quadratic constraint, we have already introduced the approach to deal with them as uh, shown in the previous slide. And then uh, based on this, all of them uh, could be converted into the mixed integer linear constraints. So the last one uh, need to be uh, 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 take care about is uh, the conversion of the max function. We know that as a standard process, we can introduce three constraints to bound the um, function fx. Uh, so let the xs be larger or equal to the f1x and f2x, and the fx plus a single step to be smaller than either of them with, uh, with a tolerable increment. So uh, as a summary, uh, the logic constraints are converted to quadratic constraints by introducing binary variables, and the quadratic constraints are converted into mixed integer linear constraints by introducing uh, bounded conditions. Uh, so in our simulation study, a simplified traffic network with two intersections is viewed uh, to simulate the proposed traffic signal scattering problem, which is shown in this figure. And the two intersections, uh, six car parks with uh, 14 unidirectional link, uh, links connect with each other are involved in this system. And uh, in this simulation simulation, we compare the proposed traffic signal control scheme uh, to the optimized fixed time scheme obtained uh, via the Webster algorithm. And uh, in the optimized uh, fixed time uh, phase plan, the, uh, uh, the phase splits are calculated based on the periodical ingress, the selected phase plan uh, for intersection one and two as shown in the table, uh, the upper table and uh, the implemented phase split in our proposed model is shown in the lower table. Uh, so the average space obtained by our method are, sim are similar to the ones obtained in the Webster's method, which indicates uh, that our proposed method could capture the characters in the ingress flow um, profile from a ma macroscopic point of view. And uh, the phase split and the number of the vehicles uh, in each link are shown in these two figures. In the left-hand side figure, we could see that uh, the longest Q lens happened in the link 11. However, the Q lens among the links in the network fell out. Uh, uh, and this, uh, the simulation result shown in the right-hand side figure indicates that uh, the longest Q lens is shrank and uh, the difference among the Q lens uh, in the network also reduced. Uh, so con some conclusions. Uh, in this paper, we introduce a mathematical model for the traffic signal scheduling problem with consideration of the uh, platoon dispersion model. And uh, uh, the traffic uh, signal scheduling problem is for formulated as a discrete time optimization problem with, with regard to the uh, traffic dynamics and the platoon dispersion. And uh, and uh, some simulation results show our proposed method could outperform the optimized uh, fixed time uh, traffic control scheme by capturing uh, some, uh, some more uh, elaborated uh, short-term traffic flow patterns. 
Uh, and that's all for my presentation today. And uh, thanks a lot for your attention.